Hari Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Obunaktu Sahaviryan Karavavahai Tejasvi Navadita Mastuma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Om Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So our two topics for today are death and liberation. What is death? The time of death is a critical moment for the human being because this is when his next destination is determined. This is the moment when he has opportunity to go back to the spiritual world. Everything in a devotee's life is leading up to this point. It is a preparation for this one major exam. As it is said, whatever we do in life will be tested at the time of death. So, death is the sometimes referred as to the final exam. Why? final exam. It is said that uh, in Bhagavad Gita there is famous verse from 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> yam yam vapi smaram bhavam tyajate ante kalevaram tam tam evaiti kaunteya sadatat bhava bhavitaha. Whatever state of mind one has at the moment of death, this kind of existence he will achieve. So whatever we think of at the time, at the moment of death, this will be our next destination. For example, if you think about pink elephant, it's very much possible to become elephant. Maybe not pink, but <laughs> elephant. If you think of a uh, dog, you may become a dog. If you become of, uh, I don't know, president of the United States, you may become a president next life. If you think of demigods, you may become a demigod or demigoddess. If you think of Krishna, you will go back to Krishna. That's why it is said that uh, our lifestyle is very, very important. Because through our lifestyle, we are creating our impressions in the mind. And the majority of these impressions will determine about what we are going to think at the moment of death. Or to put it in a more practical way, whatever, our, whatever is our attachment, our greatest attachment, most probably about this thing we will think at the moment of death. So if a devotee the whole life is practicing Krishna consciousness, chanting Hare Krishna, eating sanctified food, prasadam, associating with devotees, most probably, at the time of death, this is what he is going to think about Krishna, and then he will go to the spiritual world. Uh, is it something specific, or is it a general feeling? Because I was thinking of like people that die in a coma, they're feeling peaceful, because I'm idealizing that scenario. Mm -hmm. Or what about like a parent that's attached to their kid, because they bring a kid, or it's not specific or general? Yes, the feeling is important, but more important than this is what will be in your mind. Mm. Sometimes they are describing that the moment of death is like a, a, a movie that very fast is going through your consciousness, through your mind. Have you heard this? Yeah, yeah. but of all the happy moments. All the moments. All or like the sweet moments. All the main moments in your life, every impression, serious impression that is uh, the mind is like a amazing camera, amazing. And it can take unlimited shots, extremely fast, extremely fast. 
So all this is stored in your mind. Bam, 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 bam. Thousands, thousands of pictures every day, every day, every day. And somehow the mind, he stores all these things. And at the moment of that, all this with great speed goes through your consciousness. And then whatever is your attachment, automatically you choose this one. Stop. And then, bam, all these pictures, one of them will stop in front of your, in front of your mind. And we will mainly focus on this one, on this picture. So whatever is our greatest attachment, there we will go. This will be like, bam, okay. Krishna or pizza Based or on yes, pineapple. Oh, my favorite fruit, pineapple, pineapple. And then next birth, you become <laughs> a pineapple. Or at least some animal that very much likes to eat pineapple. <laughs> <coughs> so, that's why we are trying to be serious in our spiritual practice so that we create as much as possible spiritual impressions in our mind. Hare Krishna. Once we have these impressions, then the choice will be very easy. This is like if you are a student. Do we have a student here? Yes. So, when you are a student, you have two choices. You know you have exam at some point, yes? So now one choice is now you start study, and you study in a very balanced way, but every day. And then you know I have quite some time, so even if I study very little, when the exam comes, I will be kind of okay. And then if you do this way the things, then gradually during the time of your exam already you kind of know more or less everything, so you're kind of peaceful, yes? Then what is the next opportunity? And then what's happened? Or when the exam starts coming closer, what do you do? Yeah, you just like panic and, oh my God, oh my God, I have only two days, what to do? What? Okay, I'm not going to sleep now, I have to study, 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 study. But then you're not sure because actually you didn't invest enough time and energy in this thing. So maybe you will take your exam, but it's not sure. So in the same way, if we are doing nicely our studies during the whole life, then when the exam comes, it will be very easy. Because anyway, I, I know this. I did it like so many times. No problem. So easy to think about Krishna. Mm. Yes. Think about Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Bo, Hare Bo. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but then if you didn't do it, if your whole life was uh, money, 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 honey, 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 this, that, then at the moment of that it may be a little bit difficult. You may be a little bit... Yes. The money or the car or the flat or the, the land or this or that. So many things are important in your mind that you are not sure about what to think at that moment. Because they always were busy with something, family life, career, and then finally in the nursing home there was nothing like because they these philosophy thoughts, philosophical thoughts, like what's the meaning of everything came up at that time. Mm -hmm. That's like so. I'm thinking like it's it's not only for the time of death; it's just healthy to to have um, start thinking some, about it. Some st start realizing like. Yeah, generally people who have like near-death experiences, they really start thinking about these things. Because then you realize the, the, value, of the value or the non-value of everything that you try to achieve. Mm -hmm. Like you are working hard for money or for, you work like 20 years to buy your flat, like one uh, bedroom flat on the 10th floor and uh, 
somehow you realize, okay, I did all these things, but uh, so what now? I'm just going. I cannot take my money, I cannot take my flat, I cannot take my car. So what? why I spent all my time with this? Maybe I should do something better. So yes, they are asking this question. What? Finally, like, right, for, like yes. You're forced to, like, and yes. Why? So why? Some why? people that passed away. I remember one lady. She was just screaming for three days. She was so afraid to go. She was mm -hmm. gonna pass. It's so heartbreaking, but like people she can pass in different ways. Like, and I think also it. She had a faith after, but it didn't help her too much at that mm -hmm. time. It's really what you're saying in all the examples of what you just said, like the people running last minute because they haven't prepared. That's what happens. And yes. they're going to pass, but it's the fear of not passing the exam, which yeah. is like that underlying truth that they know. Like they're, they're and then they realize nothing, ma none of that stuff matters, and they realize what they do, what does matter. That's that last minute cramming, I feel. Yes, so sometimes we distribute books on the street and... <coughs> And people, they say, oh, I don't believe in this. And we are saying, OK, you may believe or not, but the question is, is it exist? And sometimes people are saying, uh, for me, it doesn't exist. But then one thing that you can say is, well, what about that? Like, if you want to accept Krishna, if you don't want to accept Krishna, definitely Krishna will come to you. But he'll come in the form of? That absolutely, hundred percent. As like one time, Shri Prabhupada, he was on an interview, and uh, the guy interviewer, he was a little bit kind of, a little bit aggressive. Mm -hmm. He was trying to find some faults in the philosophy in the teachings of Shri Prabhupada. So he started the interview by saying, "So, is it true that uh, in India the uh, that percentage is extremely high?" And Shri Prabhupada looked at him and he said, that, percent, that percentage everywhere is the same, 100%. <laughs> and the guy was shocked. He didn't know what to say. <laughs> so in this way, he asked a few things Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was very intelligent and he didn't know what to say. So at the end, he said, so Swamiji, tell me your philosophy. And Shri Prabhupada just started preaching to him. <laughs> but the point is that that is 100% and that will come. This is sure. This is one thing which is sure. Of course, the most amazing thing in this world is, as uh, in Mahabharata, one Yaksha asked Yudhishthira Maharaj. He was asking different questions, Yudhishthira Maharaj. So one of the questions was, what is the most amazing thing on this world? And Yudhishthira Maharaj told for a second, and he said, the most amazing thing is that although everybody will die, Sooner or later, no one thinks serious about this. Everybody's thinking, this would never happen to me. Yeah, yeah it will happen to everybody else, but not, not to me. So that's the most amazing thing. Is that ignorance? It is ignorance, yes. Yeah. It is denial. <laughs> denial. No, we all know like we're going to die. <laughs> but I've had certain conversations that people are scientific. We, we like, know. Oh, no, I don't know. Yes, we know, we'll but, know but we know, know, but actually we don't know. Well, we don't really, because if you realize it, mm. you will act in a different way. Like, for example, you are living in America, and you have flat, you have a car, you have money, you have everything. And I'm telling you, tomorrow, 6 a.m. in the morning, you are leaving to this and this country, and you will never come back. That's it. That's it. You have one, two days, just arrange all your stuff, you can sell your apartment, whatever you want to do, but 6 a.m. you are flying, and that's it. You're never coming back. So what you're going to do? Are you going to say, no, this will never happen to me? Like, No, you know, okay, I have this and this amount of time, I have to immediately prepare. You start selling everything, sell the flat, sell the car, sell Just, I'm leaving, that's it. Cannot, I cannot take these things with me. So at least let me try to do something, to arrange the things in the most favorable thing for me. So if we really are conscious about this, if people outside are really conscious, they are acting this way. But the fact that they are not doing it shows that they don't really, they don't want to think about this. Uh, it will happen. Maybe it will not happen. Who knows? Maybe they will figure out a way how to freeze us and after that, after 2,000 years, 
they will unfreeze us and then there will be a special cure and you will become immortal. <laughs> this is the dream of the materialistic people. So the devotees and the non-devotees, materialists, they perceive death in a different way. Non-devotees, materialistic people, they perceive death as the greatest horror in their life. Why? Because this will be the moment where they have to separate for their, from their attachments. Whatever they like, whatever they want to stay with, they have to just give it up. And this, for them, this is the greatest horror in life. Now, for the devotees, it's a different story. Why? Because first, devotee, he was trying whole life to cultivate attachment to Krishna. And secondly, he was trying gradually to cultivate detachment from material things. Because he has knowledge. Material things, yes, I'm using them. I have a car, I have a flat, I have money. But I know I cannot keep them. I'm just using them and I will use them for some time and at some point, okay, that's it. Like a clothes that we have, we use them for a few years. When they get old, we just throw them out and we continue with our life. So for a devotee, actually this is not a problem. The death is not a problem because the devotee knows, actually I'm just going to a better place. Just like let's say you are living in a, in a Bronx, in a basement and then suddenly someone is coming and telling you okay tomorrow i arrange a mansion for you on a long island just on the beach tomorrow you're going there so how you're going to react <laughs> you great let's go immediately why tomorrow today go 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 so the body is perceiving that in the same way it's not a problem why tomorrow? <laughs> means the body is thinking okay that's the moment where I will finish with all my material strugglings. All the problems that I have with, with my mind, it will be gone. All the problems that this body is creating every day, gone. Uh, all the problems that I have with unfavorable elements in the society, gone. Everything will be gone. The only thing that will stay is all my positive engagements with Krishna, with Krishna consciousness. He, we have this story in Srimad Bhagavatam for Dhruva Maharaj, fourth canto. Dhruva Maharaj was just a small boy. And he wanted to... Uh, he wanted to sit down on the lap of his father. His father was a great king. But his father had two wives. And the second wife, who apparently was more prominent for the king at that moment, she said to the small Druva, because Druva was not her child, but to the other princess, she said, you're not qualified to sit on the lap of your father. Mm. Next life, you'll be born from my womb, and only then you'll be able to achieve this special privilege. So Druva, because he was a Kshatriya, he was a warrior, although only five years old, he became so angry. Who is going to speak like that to me? Now I'll show them, to all of them. I'll show them. And he said to he went to his mother and said, this and this happened. What I have to do now? And his mother, because she, she was very advanced spiritually, she said, in this situation, only one person can help you. This is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Dhruva said, where can I find him? His mother said, well, the sages go in the forest. So he said, okay, I'm going for the forest. Five years old boy. So he went to the forest. And he, he met his spiritual master, Narada Muni. He gave him instructions what to do. And this small boy, five years old, he started performing tapasya, meditation, spiritual yoga practice. So first three months, gradually he stopped eating. Then he stopped drinking. Then he stopped breathing. And he was just chanting mantra in his mind. What was the mantra? No, other one. <laughs> Hare Krishna, I guess, also. Om Namo, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo, that was the mantra. And sure enough, he, he was, spiritual practice was so strong, Krishna appeared in front of him, told him, what do you want? And when Dhruva saw 
Supreme Personality of Godhead, he starts crying from ecstasy. And he said, my dear Lord, I am so stupid. I was trying to call you just for a material, unsubstantial thing. I wanted a broken glass. And now, just by seeing your beauty, I understand. I got a diamond. Now I don't want anything else. I got the, the biggest blessing, the biggest boon. Of course, Dhruva Maharaj, he had a desire to have a bigger kingdom than the kingdom of his father. So, Krishna said, no, 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 wait a minute. You call me for a certain reason. Tell me what's your desire. And Dhruva said, I cannot tell you this. Krishna said, why not? He said, because if I tell you what's my desire, it's material, and you just fulfill my material desire. Now I don't want it anymore. I want you. And Krishna said, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll fulfill your material desire, and I'll give you myself as well. You have both. So Dhruva, Dhruva became a great king. Krishna gave him to rule a special private spiritual planet. In the material universe, a special spiritual planet. It's known as the Dhruva star. Or, how we call it? The pole star. Yes. That's the planet of Dhruva Maharaj. That's why this is the first star we see. <coughs> yes. Because it's not a material object. It's a Vaikuntha planet. Manifested in the material. Pole star? Yes. And we can see that from here? Yes. Pole star. When, when the sun goes down and the night starts the coming, yes, just look at the sky. First star that you see, this is the pole star. Mm. This is the center of the whole universe. Everything else circumambulate the pole star. So Krishna made this special arrangement and Dhruva was ruling for many years, I think 36,000 years. He was a king there. And then at the end, at the end, it was time for Dhruva Maharaj to leave material universe and to go to the spiritual world. So a special spiritual plane came, a Vaikuntha plane. It's called? Yes, or? Viman, Vimana. Vimana. They are Vimana. Vimana and the first one? Pushpaka. Pushpaka. Pushpaka because sometimes these planes, they were basically made, made from flowers. The whole plane was like a flower thing. So you can, <coughs> it, just, you, it just goes with the chanting. It, 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 it can that. increase the size or decrease the size accordingly. And it operates to the speed of mind or the chanting yeah. or special. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, spiritual. It's cool because, yeah, it resonates also. Spiritual machine. It's not falling out. So the plane came and Druva had to start going to the spiritual world. And then he was just about to go and the death personified came and kneeled in front of Dhruva so that Dhruva can step on her and enter the plane. So this is what is death for the devotees. It's just an opportunity to go to the spiritual world. And then Dhruva was just about to enter the plane and he looked around. And then the servants of Krishna, the Vishnu Dutas, they asked, what are you looking for? And he said, I'm looking for my mother. I cannot go without her because she is my guru. She she brought me to Krishna consciousness. She brought me to Krishna. So I cannot live without her. And they, they smiled. The Vishnu did the smile. And they say, don't worry. Just look there. And Dhruva Maharaj, he saw another Vimana, another plane. His mother was already in the plane and going ahead to the spiritual world. So that is opportunity for the devotee to go to the spiritual world. And that is also opportunity not to go alone to the spiritual world. Because if we are serious devotees, Shastri is saying that all people which are directly connected with us, they will also get liberation. They will also get, go uh, to the spiritual world. They may not do directly spiritual activities, but just because we are very serious, everybody who is connected with us directly, he will be benefited. Will be benefited. 
100%. Shastri is saying different things on different places, but the one that I kind of have now in my mind from Srimad Bhagavatam is that three generations, uh, sorry, seven generations, three. Seven generations, three will go with the devotee to the spiritual world. What means seven generations, three? Because generally when you are born, you have direct contact with your father, mm -hmm. with your grandfather, and it, it's possible sometimes with your grand-grandfather. So three generations. So every time when a devotee, if the devotee becomes perfect, so that means serious, all the relatives from this life, they are, they are getting salvation, going to the spiritual world. Previous life, all the direct relatives also, like that, seven generations behind. Everybody who was with the contact with this devotee, seven generations behind, he is get, getting off the generation. Generations are like ancestors. Hmm? Yeah. Lifetimes. Lifetimes. Our seven previous lifetimes, uh -huh. all our relatives, they are getting also liberation. Uh -huh. okay. That's why seven times. Wherever three. they are. Wherever they are. Wherever they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why sometimes someone may say, well, it's not so practical to be a devotee. What kind of gain you are going to have? Like if you make money, you have money. You enjoy life. If you are a powerful person, others have to listen to you. You can command them. If you're a devotee, what's your benefit? No benefit. <laughs> but actually, it's not like that. If you are a devotee, you can benefit so many living entities. So many, so many, so many. Just by saying Hare Krishna to someone, he is getting such a great spiritual benefit. So that's why we say devotee perceives that as an opportunity, not as a problem. It's something positive. That's why we said that we are going to be positive today. Yes? <coughs> now, liberation. What is liberation? What means to be liberated from the material existence? Sometimes many people, they think that liberation means you just stop to exist. Or you become light. Or you become uh, air. You become one with everything. Yes, this is so to some extent, but not necessary. <coughs> After trying to enjoy the material world for a long time, the living being may realize that there is nothing but different kinds of suffering mm -hmm. and want to attain liberation from the material sufferings. Liberation actually means freedom from the influence of the illusory material energy. <coughs> so, according to our philosophy, Vaishnava philosophy, Vedanta philosophy, liberation does not mean to stop to exist. Rather, liberation means to become situated in your original, eternal existence. There is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam which says, <coughs> Mukti hitva anyata rupam svarupena vyavastiti. Mukti or liberation means hitva anyata. One should give up rupam, all his different uh, <coughs> forms or concepts of lives. So now we have uh, so many material concepts about ourselves, yes? I'm, my name is this, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm 18, I'm 60, uh, I'm intelligent or I'm stupid, I'm good artist, I'm a musician. So many material designations, so many material forms. And we think that this is me. And these things makes us sometimes happy, sometimes makes us very miserable. Yes. And now liberation means you give up all this. You understand, this is not who I am. I am not a man, I am not a woman, I am not a white, I am not black, I am not old, I am not young, I am not 
fat, I'm not thin, I'm not all these things. I don't have anything to do with all these different material designations. Who, I, who, who am I? Svaru pena via vastiti. Then the living entity can situate himself, herself in its original form. What is this? I'm eternal servant of Krishna. I'm just someone who is meant to give pleasure to Krishna. And then we are going to be situated in our spiritual form. So we have a spiritual form, we have a spiritual body. Exactly, not exactly like this, <coughs> but again, a body with legs, with hands, with mind, but non-material. Non-material means it's not going to create problems. Like, for example, I have a friend of mine, very, very good friend of mine, a devotee from Ukraine. He was just recently in my country, in Bulgaria, in Europe. Suddenly he started feeling some huge pain. And uh, the doctor, he went to doctor, doctor said, oh, no problem, everything is fine, just I'll give you one pills to, to drink. He went home and he started feeling even more pain. He said, something is wrong here. And then uh, he urgently he went to the doctor. And the doctor, because he knew the doctor actually, the doctor said, we better check out this because it looks actually something serious. doesn't look like not serious thing. So immediately they check him out. How they check him out? They just put him immediately in the operation room and they just cut. And they saw he had this, how you call, appendix. Mm -hmm. So basically they say, once you get this one, generally you have one, two, three days. If nothing is done, because there is internal inflammation, you are gone. Your blood becomes poison and you are adios amigo. So, uh, this body can create so much trouble, the material body. Spiritual body will not create any trouble. There will be no suffering, there will be no anxiety. Spiritual mind won't create trouble. Sometimes now we get up in the morning and it's like we don't want to live. Oh my God, how I'm going to go through this day? <laughs> Such a difficult, so bad mood, like everything is, everybody's wrong, everything is wrong. I don't want to see the sun, I don't want to see anybody. <laughs> Next day, oh, everything is so beautiful. The birds are churning and beauty and nice weather, everything. Oh, this is our mind. It's torturing us constantly. <laughs> Spiritual mind won't, won't torture us. Spiritual mind will be always nice. Just now, now when we have a good moment, it will be always like that, without the bad side. So this is spiritual existence. This is a sp spiritual form. So this is how it's going to be in the spiritual world. Only the good things without the bad ones. And Krishna will be there, even better, because with Krishna is always big fun. Always something, something interesting is going on. There is no, you cannot be bored in, in the spiritual world. It's always fun. You even don't have time to sleep very often because so many things are going on in the day, in the night, that no time for sleeping. And that's like a one direct It depends on our consciousness. If our consciousness is completely pure, we just go directly. In Bhagavatam it is said, it can be just like a lightning. There is a lightning and next moment you are in the spiritual world. And suddenly Krishna is in front of you watching you and laughing at you. Ha, ha, ha. You are such a maya in the material world. You did all these crazy things. I cannot believe. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> okay, most important is you are again here with us. No problem. Let's go. Let's go. The cows are waiting. We are going to Govardhan Hill. Yamuna is there. We will take bath. Everything is nice. Let's go. Forget about all this stuff in the material world. Uh, at the end, I'll tell you one nice story about material world, about Maya as a 
end of our <coughs> seminar. So liberation, a devotee can choose what kind of liberation he wants. The highest devotees, the most advanced devotees, they don't want even liberation. They don't want even liberation. They want only to do something for the pleasure of Krishna. They don't care if they will be in the spiritual world, if they will be in the material world, if they will be in the hell, they don't care. Because in their consciousness there is only one thing. Is, it, is Krishna happy or not? And if Krishna is happy, I'm happy. And if Krishna is not happy, I'm miserable. This is the level of consciousness of Srimati Radharani. Srimati Radharani is known as the greatest devotee of Krishna. So there is one famous verse Srimati Radharani is saying, if I know that by doing something, this thing will make Krishna happy, uh, no, sorry. If, if I know that my suffering will make Krishna happy, then my suffering becomes one, my greatest happiness in life. So this is the consciousness of these elevated devotees. Of course, we are not on this level. We wouldn't mind to go back to the spiritual world, is it? Just get rid of all these stupid problems here in this material world and just go to the spiritual world. So there are different kinds of liberations that a devotee can get. There is one kind of liberation that a devotee would never accept. It's known as Sayuja, Sayuja Mukti, Sayuja liberation. That means to become one with the Supreme. Or to merge with the effulgence of the Krishna, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This effulgence is known as Brahma Jyoti. Many spiritualists, this is their ultimate goal that they want to achieve. They just want to merge with the light, with the effulgence of the Lord. They think this is the greatest achievement. It is great achievement because it's much better situation than the material existence. But from the perspective of our, our Vaishnava philosophy, personal philosophy, it's not really a uh, suitable place to exist for two reasons. One is after some time it becomes boring there because you don't do anything, you just exist. <laughs> so you exist in bliss, but you exist. How long time you can exist just? Like for example, now I'll put you in this room and I'll close the door and I will uh, make the temperature the best temperature and you just stay. For how long you can stay? One hour, two hours, then what? You have to do something. You have to eat, you have to smile, you have to dance. You, something you have to do. This is the nature of the soul. The soul is very active by nature. So the soul at the end of the day will become unsatisfied even being part of Brahma Jyoti. <laughs> And then, uh, just to add the, the, the second reason, then the second problem with this Brahma Jyoti is that uh, people, they think they stop to exist there. Actually, they don't stop to exist. They exist ag again as a personalities. But Krishna makes the illusion for them not to perceive themselves in this way. So they think they stop to exist, but actually they continue to exist as a personalities. This is this... Huh? Can you repeat that? Krishna creates this, the illusion that we don't... Yes, these spiritual personalities like Buddhists and other spiritual people, they want to stop to exist. They think now I'm a person and I want to stop being a person. Why? Because person means suffering. And if I stop being a person, I will stop my suffering. Mm -hmm. Very simple logic. And then, because this is their desire, Krishna is making special arrangement for them, but actually they continue to exist. They continue to exist because a living entity is by nature eternal personality. So we cannot become not personalities. But because this is their desire, Krishna is making arrangements. Like he made arrangements for us. We were in the spiritual world, we thought, I want to be God. 
Krishna said, okay, fine. Here you go, go to the material world, be God. Think that you are the center of everything. And from time to time you will get a little bit slapping because you just have to remember that you are not God. So same thing he is making for them. And because they have this desire, Krishna arranged the illusion that they think that they don't exist anymore. And that's the joining with the emulgence of the light. And the light. Yes, with the fulgence of the Lord, Brahma Jyoti, it's called. Just effulgence, light. So it creates that illusion that they're nothing. They don't perceive themselves. They think I don't exist anymore. But actually, if someone from a side comes, he will perceive them as a person who is just sitting there. But they perceive that they don't exist. But actually, they exist. <laughs> <laughs> and how he know this? We know it from a book called Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, where Gop Kumar travels. So Gop Kumar is a coward boy who was on earth. But then he's getting a special mantra from his guru. And with this mantra, he starts traveling, going to higher and higher dimensions of existence. And then at some point, he reaches the spiritual world. And when he goes to the spiritual world, to the Brahma Jyoti, and travels with his mantra through the Brahma Jyoti, he sees all these yogis and jnanis and Buddhists who are meditating there. And then he understands, wow, I thought that they can become nothing, but actually, no, they are still personalities. So this is how we know this. So anyway, a devotee would never accept this uh, way of liberation. But there are four other kinds of liberation that sometimes a devotee may accept. It depends on his advancement and depends on his desires. The first one is called Salokya. The devotee goes to live on the same place, same planet where the Lord lives on the Vikunta plan, spiritual world. So devotee has a particular desire. I want to become liberated, but it's not the same for me. I just want to be on the planet where is Krishna, very specific form of Krishna that the devotee likes. He want to be there with Krishna. That's his desire. And he'll, he'll get it because this is his desire. He'll go to the planet of Krishna, special planet. Sarshti. A devotee wants the same opulence like Krishna. Krishna is the richest, the most opulent person. Devotee, he is completely surrendered to Krishna, but internally he has this desire for opulence, for wealth, for, for riches. So he will go to the spiritual world, he will be with Krishna, but he will have very opulent lifestyle. He will have very opulent residence, lots of money, everything very opulent lifestyle because he has this desire. Sarupya, devotee wants to get the same bodily features as the Lord. So he gets a body which very much represents exactly the body of Krishna. He, he looks very similar to Krishna. When the same book, Brihad Bhagavatam Brita, when Gop Kumar goes through this effulgence and reaches the spiritual planets, Vaikuntha planets, and he enters one of those planets and he sees a servant of Krishna, a Vishnu Dutta. But this Vishnu Dutta, he has the same form as Krishna. So when Gop Kumar sees him, he thinks, this is Narayan, this is Krishna. Immediately falls flat on the ground, offer obeisances. But because this a devotee is not Krishna, he becomes so, uh, what is the word? Uncomfortable that he is accepting the respects which are not for him, they are for Krishna. So he becomes immediately like, no, what are you doing? Why are you paying obeisances to me? He's saying, you are Narayan. He's saying, I'm not Narayan. I'm just an insignificant servant of Narayan. Come with me, I'll bring you to Narayan. I'm just an ordinary person. But he has the same features like Narayan. He looks like Narayan. And then the last kind of liberation is Samipya. Devotee wants to have a very particular association of the Lord, to associate in a very particular way with the Lord. So this will be all also arranged. How, where is this coming from? Uh, this explanation? This kind, of, this kind of liberation you're mentioning, where is this? Where is this crap? Where is this coming from? Like, who says that? Yeah, is this who says Atam it? Or is, like, where, where is this from? In different places, but especially in Bhagavatam, I can give you a reference from third canto of Bhagavatam, the conversation 
Kapiwa Shiksha, Kapiwa Dev is speaking to his mother. So in one of the verses he is describing these different kinds of liberations that the devotees can achieve. If you like, I can give you also the... I don't remember now the exact number of the verse, but I can find it for you. So he is mentioning this, this kind of, of liberation. Actually, the verse, the verse is very interesting because the verse, what the verse says is that a devotee will not accept even this kind of liberations unless he has the opportunity to serve the Lord. If he has the opportunity to serve Krishna, okay, no problem. If this will help my service, facilitate my service, then I can accept. Yes, if with this reach as well, I can serve Krishna, I will accept it. If I have, let's say, very opulent um, mansion, house, and I can serve Krishna with this facility, then yes, I will accept it. But otherwise, the devotee is not interested. Now, why do I need this? If I cannot do some service with it for Krishna, I'm not interested. This is what the verse is saying. Vina matse vanam janaha. The devotees, they won't accept this. Vina matse vanam. If there is no opportunity for seva, for service to Krishna. So, yes. Four of these types of liberation are meant for the devotees and one is meant for the impersonalists. The four Vaishnava kinds of liberation bring one to the Vaikuntha planets. So if you want one of those things, then we will reach the Vaikuntha planet. If we are totally free from any desire, even if we don't know anything from these things, then we will go to the highest planet, which is Goloka Vrindavana, the planet of Krishna. If we're free of any of those liberations? Huh? If we don't know any of those liberations? If we don't want. If we're unaware of those liberations? That you yeah, just and, we'll, and we love Krishna, we go to the planet of Krishna. The highest planet in the spiritual world. And where do those liberations take place? In their destiny of free will or in our intention? According to our desire. Subconscious? Yeah, according to our desire. We develop desire to go to the spiritual world, but it's a specific desire. So Krishna will, in a specific way, he will fulfill our desire. And if it's unconditional, then Krishna will just. Because Krishna. When a devotee serves Krishna, Krishna feels dependent. Krishna is, Krishna will always reciprocate to the endeavors that someone is making for him. Always. This is like 100% sure. 108% sure. So now, if we do some service for Krishna, Krishna immediately wants to reciprocate. Okay, I, I wanted to give you something. What do you want? So now, we can get the amount of payment for our service in a different ways. We can get it just in a material facilities if we want. This is not very intelligent, but we can do it. We can just co come to the temple of Krishna, serve Krishna, and then we can go in front of Krishna and say, Krishna, I want money. I want a beautiful girlfriend. I want uh, to become the president of America. And Krishna will fulfill this because the little amount of service is so powerful that nothing material is unachievable by this. But if we don't want that, then Krishna will say, no, I want you to ask something, ask for something. Then, if we are more, in, more intelligent, we will ask for something spiritual. We say, yeah, Krishna, I want a liberation from material problems and I want to go back to the spiritual world. And of course, I wouldn't mind if I have... Uh, this or this or this or this. Then Krishna is saying, okay, sure, of course. I'll be so happy to do this for you. But then, if a devotee is so pure that Krishna says, what can I do for you? And the devotee says, nothing. What do you mean nothing? Like, you did so much for me. I want to do something for you. Nothing. I just don't want anything. I, I am happy that I did something for you and now you're happy. This is my happiness. And then, Krishna starts feeling uncomfortable. Mm, I have to do something. <laughs> so I want to give him something, but he doesn't want anything. So what shall I give him? I can give him the greatest riches in the material world, but no, this, this is not enough. What he did for me is so great to give him just like the opulences of Indra, the king of heaven, this is oh, so insignificant. I cannot do that. 
Okay, I'll give, I'll give him the riches of Vaikuntha planet, the spiritual world. No, this is also so insignificant. This is also so insignificant. What can I give this personality? What can I, how can I repay? And then the conclusion to which Krishna is coming is, I cannot repay. I cannot repay. This is so great what this devotee did for me. I cannot repay it with anything. So that's why Krishna is saying, only the good qualities that you generated your devotion of series, this is your reward. You become such a great personality, such a great uh, person, such amazing qualities you are showing, this is already your reward. I cannot repay in any other way. But still, at least I can do one thing. At least one thing I can do is saying, Krishna, I can give myself to you. I become your property. Now you can do with me whatever you like. You can take me, you can bring me whatever you like. And you can do it with me whatever you like. This is the only thing Krishna can do for such an amazing devotee. So if we are serious in our devotional practice, this is what we are going to achieve. We are going to get Krishna. There is a very interesting saying. He reasons you who says that Vaishnavas die. When they are living still in sound, a Vaishnav dies to live and lives and living tries to spread the holy name around. So Vaishnavas, they never die. They just go back to the spiritual world. Thank you very much for your attention. Would you like me still to tell you the story that I mentioned? Or? Yes. So, like, I don't know if you said something about, like, the devotees, like, like, whatever they're doing, if it's pleasing Krishna, then they're good. So, like, how do we know what we're doing is making Krishna? Very intelligent question. This is the best question that one can ask. Amazing. Uh, <coughs> it's difficult to know because Krishna is Krishna. This is the, 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 the greatest personality in the whole, even if, if it's not right to say creation in the whole world. Uh, still, we get some hints from Shastra, from the scriptures from the holy books, they are giving some hints what things will satisfy Krishna. And then more practically, that's why spiritual life means we have to accept Guru at some point. Uh, advance spiritual personality and we should go and ask him. What will satisfy Krishna? Then this person, because he is advanced, he knows and he will tell us. And it can be something very practical. Like, for example, he can say, well, Krishna will be very pleased if you just go every day outside and try to find few people and tell them Hare Krishna. Mm. Or he can say, uh, Krishna will be very pleased if you help us to cook food which we are going to offer to Krishna and make it spiritual and give it to people. And when they eat this food, they will become purified. So he knows how to make the very intricate spiritual philosophy very practical for us on our level and give us something very practical to do which actually is very pleasing to Krishna. So basically we have to find a guru at some point in our spiritual life. And then spiritual life becomes easy. Sometimes not so easy because the guru can ask interesting things. Like my guru asked me to come to New York. Mm. So I had to come because he's my guru. Otherwise, how I'm accepting a guru if I'm not doing what he's telling me? Uh, but generally, he is mild. The guru is mild. He sees our situation. He sees our life. He, he won't make some drastic changes in our life. Rather, he will try to give us tasks and opportunities which are kind of very uh, conducive to our way of living, our 
nature, our skills and abilities. I, for example, if the spiritual master sees that someone is a very good musician, most probably he will ask him, okay, do music for Krishna, spread the holy name. The spiritual master sees that, let's say, if someone is a very good salesman, he can ask him, okay, open a restaurant for Krishna or distribute books for Krishna. So basically, the spiritual master, he tries to use the nature of the disciple and engage him in this way in service of Krishna. Some other questions? Yes. Why are we named Why? What is that? Why, why, why are we named Tulsi? You're saying how the spiritual master, you know, it's annoying what the uh, strength, balance, uh -huh. and structure. So just wondering why did he give you the name Tulsi? Ah, why he gave me the name yeah. Tulsi? I don't know. Okay. Never ask him this, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe I have to ask him. Hmm. Maybe it's a good idea. Maybe I can guess. Maybe I didn't dare to ask him. That's why I didn't ask. Him. But in, in Quran, your name is—it's like the name. It's a spiritual name. It's a spiritual. It's a sacred it's plant. It's a sacred. Yeah. yeah. And every time we call your name, <coughs> it's sacred plant. Not that we see you as. I mean, I, I'm, I speak for myself. I don't see you as a plant, but it's like a reminder. <laughs> It's a reminder, you know, constantly that connection. No, because in even Ayurveda, Tulsi is believed uh, is so important. It has so much uh, cure, you know. Yeah, Tulsi is directly coming from the spiritual world. Directly, right. So by remembering Tulsi, that means we are already going in the spiritual world. You can go in two ways in the spiritual world. One way is to remember Krishna. The other way is to remember a pure devotee of Krishna. Is the same. To remember Krishna or to remember a pure devotee, you you get the same benefit. Like, yeah, like if we remember Prabhupada, for example, or Tulasi. Tulasi is a pure devotee of Krishna. We get the same spiritual benefit. You know Tulasi? Yeah? You know? No. It's a plant. Oh, Tulsi. 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 Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Tulsi. Yes. Actually, my name is Tulsi. It's not Tulasi. But uh, Tulsi is actually in Bengali language. So my, my name it's is in Tulsi. It's the same thing uh, all over India. Uh, Tulsi. It, this is how it's pronounced. Ah, okay. Tulsi. Yeah. And you can find pretty much, you've been there, so mm -hmm. in every home they have a Tulsi class. Oh, much. yeah. Every home. They say that if someone wears Tulsi, Tulsi a knee back, a uh, bead back. Not be back. Uh, be back no, how are you call? Oh. Neck beat. Thank you. Neck beats of Tulasi. If someone wears this, he will never see Yamaraj, the god of death. He will never see the Yamadutas, the servants of Yamaraj. So basically, he is protected from any kind of problems, any kind of evil. Tulasi is extremely powerful. Do you have Tulasi? Okay, we have to get you some. Is that different than Nama? Huh? Is Tulasi Brahman different than Nama? Or is that called that? That's Tulasi. Oh. This is made from Tulasi. Oh, wow. I didn't know. Thank you very much, dear devotees. That was good. That's a good question. I'm also wondering when. I just heard today that maybe he is coming uh, for Rata Yatra. So I guess beginning of June he'll be coming. What about, the, what about the story? Yes, I will tell you just to finish officially. Shio Prabhupada Ki. Yeah.